being Italian. The, the actual Italian, not the Italian Russian. It looks like a chonky boy. It looks intimidating. The way the armor was plated, it was just so impenetrable. You call it a battle position, a BP, and the gun can come up and go lower, and press lower than a regular tank and come down. Oh, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Total Recoil, where we explore weapons, equipment, and vehicles from some of your favorite video games. It's good to be back with you folks. I'm Israel Wright, former Green Beret, and I'm very excited to welcome our very special guest, former tank commander, Shelby Bragg. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Shelby Bragg. I was a former tank commander with the 1st Cavalry Division. I held every role on tank, from loader, driver, gunner, and tank commander. Right on, man. I'm very honored to be in your presence, Shelby. Thanks for joining awesome, us, Awesome, thanks. <laughs> Today, folks, we're gonna be looking at footage from War Thunder. Have you played War Thunder? All the time. Yay, all right, good. <laughs> it's one of my games. That's good, I haven't played it. I think we're in good hands, folks. Let's rock and roll, let's do it. We're looking at like a prototype, apparently that never kind of went into mass production. Yeah, or maybe some mad scientist just decided, hey, let's make something crazy that we can't <laughs> afford to make. It's gotta be a fun job designing new technology. Oh, I would agree. Well, this is pretty cool. Look at it right there on the bottom left in the circle hood. It has the crew occupants, if you look closely. Where they're at, yeah, I can yeah. see that where they're sitting. That's exactly. cool. Like they're shooting an auto turret. Nice. So that's how, possibly the loader, maybe? Yeah, how old is the crow system? This wouldn't be a crow system. There's a guy in there right now, right? Right, but the, no, a crow system is pretty much, you know, just a, a system. The name of it for the system is just them saying, hey, this is an automated system. Okay. This is, I want to say early, early 2000s, possibly. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments, folks. We love you. Look at the top right, right there, when it said critical hit. Showed you what happened to that vehicle when it was nice. hit. Do you play this one? Play oh, War yeah. Thunder? Love it. I love that. Look at the graphics and stuff like that. It looks like one of that side gunner there with the turret, the right. mini turret. He's actually sitting on one, the left-hand side of the tank. Yeah. You look at that. See how it just injured the occupants oh, inside? Oh, yeah. That's cool. So the different cool. rounds, and it tells you what happened. Crew knocked out. That's, yeah. Oh, that's wild. That's a thing. If uh, someone gets knocked out in the crew, you have to take their, their uh, position. Oh, man. Is there, I mean, is there a lot of room to maneuver? Is there a place you could put him? You pull him out of his seat or something, lay him in the back? Honestly, put him up top in the bustle rack <laughs> or move him around. <laughs> Yes, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, you still want them to be safe, though. But like right there, look, it just he took out the driver. You gotta oh. drag that driver out. Boy, War Thunder's got that amazing detail. He got damage on different parts of the tank, and it tells you what's happening to the right. dudes inside. That's pretty cool. Do you miss it? You're out now. You're not You're not driving tanks around much anymore. Uh, do you miss it at all? What do you miss? Nah, I miss the shooting. Shooting was real fun, the competition. <laughs> yeah. I also miss my crew. Different crews, you know, you learn different things. Look at that right there, hit inside the slope, it knocked out the gunner, it looks like. Wow. Oh, that's pretty cool, look, they just went into thermal mode. Dang. That's so realistic. Do you have different optics when you're in a tank? Oh, yes, you have thermals and daytime, so you have black hot and white hot. So depending on the temperature of a target, you might have to switch to black or, or white hot, so the target will light up. So the target will light up brighter or darker, black or white hot. Nice. I love it. I love the old darker, like Cold War look. Just moving the tank out of the way. Do you ever, you have to have to clear obstacles with the tank at all? Do you trained for that? Have you ever been faced with that? Uh, so cars maybe, or different types of barriers per se. Usually you have an engineer team with you. You let them do that. Okay. Or EOD team, because if it's, you know, mines or something. Yeah. But if not, we are trained on that. All right. We have cool. different uh, tactical variants of how we get through. Do you have anything like a towing system or you got a wench in there or something like that if you need to pull something? Old school style. Put those tow cables on the back or a tow bar and you're towing out of there. Yeah, I love it. What do you think about the readout and stuff on there? Pretty familiar? Spot on. I love the little carrier thing. You got the duffel bags thrown in back there. Oh, we call it, yeah, the bustle rack. So you put your water up there, you put your bags up there. We actually roll the tarp up there and we put our bags in there and we waterproof it. So uh, the tarp is waterproof, but we want to keep our bags waterproof as well. Put the bags underneath it, we roll everything up nice and nice. You need to call it a burrito roll. <laughs> so we burrito roll it all up and our gear is safe and doesn't get wet or dusty and stuff. Right on, that's cool. Cool. You find little fun little things to do, like little uh, tricks of the trade, little uh, pro tips, and you're inside to make yourself comfortable and stuff inside. The oh tank. yeah, definitely. You have your sponsor boxes on the side where you load up your oil, your rifles, your snacks. You gotta have your snacks. You gotta have your snacks. Have your cooler in the back. You know, learn how to play music throughout the intercom when you're. It's just you and your crew just chilling. You know, yeah. not not on a mission. Right. Going just relaxing out. You know, so. Some chill lo-fi out in the field in the tank. Oh, yeah. I love that. You gotta have a cooler. You gotta have your energy drinks and water. Cold water is always refreshing to have, actually. <laughs> 
Looks like they're scoping out the enemy. Uh, See, enemy he has team. something in there. Yeah. Switched out round, and there it is. Hit. Oh, wow. Yeah. But you've mentioned things like Sabo rounds. Like, what does that do? That thing goes into, it's like a solid piece of steel, right? Sabo. Right. So, a Sabo round is like a spear, but it's a rod. It's a, it's a tungsten rod. And with that rod, when it hits, the kinetic force moving so fast through the air, when it hits, it just hits the side of the tank or the vehicle it's in. Right there, it shows how it's like going through. Yeah. But it, this round is designed to try to pull anything and everything inside that vehicle out. It's like of a that suction small kind hole. of thing? Yeah. Wow. Think of it as a small black hole in theory. That's the best way of thinking of that round. In War Thunder, can you could you have like a World War One tank going up against like an M1 to A2 Abrams in this game? You could actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> depending if you're playing in a private group, depending on different servers as well. Okay. They try to make it fair for everybody. Yeah, right. Because I mean, in real life, a World War One tank's not going to stand up very well against a modern day tank. Not at all. You see, he customizes. Oh, as well. did he have a little custom skin? Like, he had like on mad there? eyes on the front of the tank turret. Pretty, that's pretty funny. Any kind of customization in real life, you get to do anything, or you got to keep it pretty clean. So for us, usually depending on the company you're in, Alpha. Bravo, Charlie, or Delta, you get to name your tank and you put your name on the gun tube, okay. starting with the letter of the company. So if you're in Delta Company, your tank might say Dragon Slayer. Okay. I love that. I love that little customization. Or a guy, he put on, he was in, we were in Charlie Company, he put Cookie Monster on the side of it. <laughs> something, something to, you know, lighten up the mood. Right on. Argentinian tank, Tam 2C. Did you do much training with like other foreign militaries at all in your time, man? So actually, I have. I did it with uh, Korea. They okay. have a cool tank. Their tank kind of shadows ours in a sense, has our same barrel. Uh, I've did them with the Canadian army as well, the German army. I actually worked on a German post in Germany. Yeah. So I worked with the German EOD team, their oh. army for three years All recently. All right, nice. Oh, look at that guy. He had like the, the little, almost like a waffle thing on his on that tank. The T-72 or T-90, he had uh, he had reactive armor plates on the reactive front. So they're armor. coming out right now. What he has on there protects him from certain rounds or even RPG. Oh, really? Okay. So the RPGs hit that ballistic armor. It's like a small explosion to hit and it counteracts it. So okay. it pushes that explosion force out from the tank. Okay. And not inside where the crew's at. Okay. It's designed that way to keep that force away from the tank right. itself. Right. It pushes it out. So the plates, they absorb that impact and push it okay. or they evenly spread it they're getting real close like generally do you, you don't want to get close when you're in the um, tank right no. you don't want to be within 500 meters okay Put it right there in the back of the gun. Now you're trained for that kind of stuff. Like you're trained for like where you're aiming for at like a certain tank and stuff like that. What part do you want to aim at when you're aiming at a tank? Or if you're firing at another tank, you want to fire at the weakest armor points of that vehicle. Okay. That's why it's always important to study that vehicle. So okay. weak points are usually where the engine's at or on the side plates where the sprocket's at. Sometimes the sprocket doesn't have enough armor around it. You know, you can't put too much armor because you'll weigh the tank down. Mm -hmm. So it's a design flaw that most tanks do have. Oh, Israeli tanks. That's a. I'm partial, of course. This is actually a crazy tank, the Markava. The Israeli tank? Yes. Oh, wow. What's crazy about it? What makes it so crazy is that the armor on it and the way the gun depresses, it's called depressing when the gun goes up and down. The gun can go to a negative slope and come down. So huh. it could be under, call it a battle position, a BP, and the gun can come up and go lower, depress lower huh. than a regular tank and come down. What might the advantage of that be? More concealment. So more concealment means you're not going to show the rest of the tank or the turret. And then the turret's real slim, as you see. So it's made so if you're trying to fire and you're in a BP tucked in, the only thing that shows is your turret barely. For them, they could pop out a little bit and still shoot and be safe. You think also the angle we've talked about, armor planning angles, you think that also might be an advantage? It's a real narrow profile, mm -hmm. looks like. Our round glances off it, maybe? So when you view this tank, there's less imagery, I would say, when you're looking through the scope. Okay. So it's less to lock on target. So it's harder to get a target on this type on this style of the tank. It's interesting to see from country to country what the engineers were thinking in terms of what their priorities were and what they wanted to emphasize and what they wanted to go for, and then maybe what they could afford. Different tanks have different purposes. You know, some tanks are made to be in the open desert. The Abrams was designed for. Oh, okay, okay. Um, some are made for urban warfare. Britain tanks, their tanks have so much armor on top to protect them from RPGs from rooftops. So every tank is designed for a certain battle, but then they don't just have multiple variants of it. It's, this tank is stronger in this environment. Ah, uh, okay. German tank Panzer. I hear a lot about the Panzer. I mean, looking at, you know, like Saving Private Ryan, you know, Band of Brothers, that kind of stuff, Fury. That was a scary tank. The armor was so thick. It looks like a chonky boy. It looks intimidating. The way the armor was plated, it was just so impenetrable. 
the time, the guns that they had, it took forever for the ammo to even try to penetrate it. Or if it penetrated, it didn't. You gotta keep penetrating the same area. Ah, boy, you had to be really accurate. Right. With your shots and stuff. How accurate can you be? Is it pretty easy to be accurate these days with an Abrams? Like, you, you put that pinpoint shot pretty easy to target? Oh yeah, so with an Abrams, it's easy. Literally, you just laser and blaze it, we call it. You <laughs> laser target and fire with the trigger and boom. Nice. And then if it, the vehicle is moving, the computer will compute, follow it and track it and fire it. So it tells you if the vehicle is going 20 miles per hour, I need to shoot right here in the round. It's gonna hit the center mass. Wow, it'll tell oh. you where to lead. So it, yeah, it does the computation for you. Good thing we got that technology. All right. Can you imagine back then, like old World War II type stuff, man, they had to do all that stuff maybe just in their heads, like math, you know, like uh, calculating where the shot needs to go or how to lead and stuff like that. It's pretty amazing. Right here, they have a crew of four, it looks like. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see in the diagram. That's pretty interesting. That's something I haven't seen in, uh, that's something I haven't seen in other games where it's vehicle based. They really put a lot of detail into the details of what's inside the, and, and where you're hitting and all that kind of stuff. So War Thunder, kudos to you for thinking of that kind of stuff. All right. Being Italian, the, the actual Italian, not the Italian Russian. That's actually a nice vehicle. I've seen one of those. One of these? Um, they had it actually, when I was in Italy, they had it at, not the airport, but like the port at the beach. Okay. And it was like set up around one of the uh, embassies. Almost looks like a hammerhead thing at the top. They got the two things on the side there. I don't know yeah, what that is. Yeah, for two missiles. Missiles, okay, those are missiles, okay. So fun fact, I can speak on the German vehicles. Some of the Italian vehicles, they love to have propellers on their vehicles. Really? They love to have their vehicles forded in the water. Oh. So they want to go, but you have to think, remember every vehicle is designed for certain terrains. It's a lot of water, it's a lot of swamps in, yeah. in Europe, a lot of forestry. So therefore their vehicles, they want to be able to go in the mud. They want to be able to go in the yeah. lakes. Amphibious. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, interesting. That's something they really think about, huh? That's cool. That's why, that's why this one looks like it has, you know, the missiles and maybe a smaller gun. It has a real long body looking like the Italian. A round looks like it went above it and exploded. Are there kinds of rounds that you can fire from a tank where it would, it's not necessarily meant to hit directly, but maybe near it and then explode or something like mm -hmm. that? So it's different rounds are made. Some rounds you have to make take out bunkers and some rounds are even made for helicopters. Helicopters are not something you want to fight if you're that close to them. <laughs> you do not want to be in the eyesight of a helo at all. Okay. That's the worst, but there are rounds that are made for that. Nine times out of 10, mission is if you see enemy air, you digress, you get out of there. And <laughs> you at that point you're just playing with, cause they're like, okay, you're not gonna shoot me down. They can shoot you from miles out. You know, it's funny. It's like, you know, in a lot of games like Starcraft and stuff, they have different units that have advantages and different advantages and that do well or worse against certain other units. So it looks like it's kind of the same kind of thing mm -hmm. in real life. You, yeah. A tank has a purpose. It has certain weapons and certain advantages and disadvantages that can do well against certain troops or vehicles, but maybe not so well against others. Right. Definitely, definitely true. Oh, wow. This looks like a uh, artillery gun. Yeah. So it looks like it's got a big old, big old boy gun on there. Maybe 155 millimeter. This definitely looks like World War II. It's a rolling box on it's tank artillery tracks. gun. Definitely would not want to be in battle with that. It looks like it has a very specific purpose. It's got one gun. It's a long body, big, big boxy body in the back. I wonder what that back flap is for, that back hatch, it almost looks like. Maybe crew air or it's yeah, damaged. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Ooh. Taking a lot of damage though, right? Yeah. Maybe this would the advantage of this one's got a big old gun. Maybe it's not but not as maneuverable. It doesn't have a lot of doesn't look like there's other guns sticking out. No gun ports. More like an ambush vehicle. Dang, you see the shrubs around there. Oh yeah, yeah. They got the camouflage. Did you do any kind of camouflage for anything that you ever did? You have to like get some tree branches and put them on there or whatever? Oh, of course. So rule of thumb <laughs> when you do the tree branches, you're supposed to get the tree branches that are falling around you. Oh, you don't want to similar pull. to the surrounding. Right. You don't want to get tree branches from the trees that are the healthy tree branches. Oh, uh, Okay. So you, you want to get the dead shrubbery from around you, put it on your vehicle, then you want to cover up your tracks as well. Uh, you want to make it look like nobody's came through in yeah. that area. Well, that makes sense because you're on the ground. You're a tank that's on the ground. So mm -hmm. you would have to be something that's at your level, not right. like the healthy trees up above. So, you know, if you get an ax out, you start chopping trees down, they're going to see, hey, that was just recently cut. <laughs> Whoa! That's actually scary. <laughs> you ever have to do any kind of heavy terrain oh, traversal? Yes, that's very scary. <laughs> the reason why is the vehicles flip. Yeah, you're that, right. That, that's your main concern. You don't want vehicle your vehicle to flip over. This guy's going through the water right now. Do you have contingencies about what you do if your tank should happen to flip? So if you flip, what you're supposed to do is it turns over. The gunner is supposed to traverse the tank manually. The turret and the hole, the hole is the bottom of the tank. Uh huh. The hole will still move. Okay. So you can move it and you align it and everything will align 
underneath the driver's hatch. It's supposed to get out from the driver's hatch. The driver's hatch, mm -hmm. okay. You turn it really, really fast, and then everyone goes to the driver hole hatch. Because in theory, the tank is up, holes up. Turret is in the mud or flipped yeah. over, so you're above the water. Okay, but definitely don't want to don't want to flip. No, you don't <laughs> want to flip. If anything on this tank is familiar, look at the gun on it. Yeah. That gun is the same one that's used on the Abrams. Yeah, I was gonna say, it almost looks like an Abrams. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, reverse engineering, a lot of design stealing and innovation looking at, well, that looks like a good idea. I think we'll try that, you know? Mm -hmm. what, are, what do you think those circles are? There could be engine access. Okay. In our tank, it's like a panel you pull. Their tank may be circles that either can stow away in the back of the hole okay. or they fold up okay. to do your general maintenance to, you know, help oil, transmission fluid, okay. coolant. Believe it or not, these vehicles still need that. Looks like you even got some flares on there on the side, maybe. Oh, yes. He has a big array of flares on the right hand side. Everything's low profile and tucked. Yeah, it looks super low profile. What do you like about this game as opposed to something like World of Tanks? I like how when it shows you who got damaged inside the vehicle. Okay, the detail. The damage. Right. Yeah, it, I love that up on the right hand side. Yeah. It explains it because it shows you, like I spoke about earlier, the different rounds we use. It shows you what the round is actually doing to the inside occupants, which is pretty spot on. Can you get taken out pretty quick in this game? It looks like you can get, man, if you get a wrecked hit or something, it can knock the crew out or something, you're done. Right. So you see he's hiding, but he was able to find him and he's firing at him. Yes, yeah. he has a main battle, like a heavy battle tank. When you're in the tank, like you, do you train for that kind of stuff, like to stick and move? Like you fire around and then maybe you move over here and you fire like maybe another round? or something like that? So depending on the mission, you're in a BP battle position. So okay. you want to tuck into your battle position. You're covered around dirt or even maybe barriers. Okay. You want to come up, come down, come okay. up and come down. Now, if something happens where you have to leave your BP, then yes, you're going to try to make another BP or you're going to find somewhere where you're higher up. You want to look down on your targets and oh. fire in and push back because the gun can only go up so high. Uh, you want that high ground. Different Attica. tactics, yeah. Kill box, we call it, you know, when you're high ground, low ground. Okay. Low ground, you have more odds of getting killed than uh, getting fired upon. Oh, uh, okay. So this is actually a cool vehicle, the 2S6. Russian? It's oh. a Russian radar vehicle. That's oh, it's made, a radar vehicle? Right, so it's made to take out anti-air from miles away. It's got a radar and it's got like, what, missiles and stuff missiles, on it? Missiles, extremely fast machine gun. It's armed to the teeth to fight air vehicles. Now, what is the trophy system? The trophy system, pretty much every country's design of a trophy system can either be for, you know, rockets, missiles, um, certain rounds, but it's a deterrent to keep the crew safe. Uh, grenades. It's a self-defense thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you see right there, how fast it's firing. Yeah. That's actually how fast it actually fires. That's awesome. There's something magical about a fast, fast rapid fire machine gun. See how the gun goes up? It's yeah. made to go in the air and come uh, up all the way up to fire at uh, helicopters and even aircraft. This is somebody you'd want with you if you did have helicopters or something like that in the area. Oh, yes, definitely. Jets even, you think? Mm-hmm. Wow. Lock on missiles with them. Wow. When I was stationed in Fort Irwin at the training center there, see, look, there it is Ooh. on a jet. Nice. See how it's locked on? Yeah, Bam. you got him. Aircraft destroyed and it has that radar to find them. When I was stationed there, we used to use this vehicle. I was on this vehicle, a mock-up version of it. It had the same type of fixtures, but it didn't fire it. Oh, okay. It was more of a prop, but your job was to fire at uh, Apache fast mover vehicles, jets, and you'd have to call the grid coordinates, and then you'd pop flares and have fun. And it was just like shooting in the game right now. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, the Russian tank coming at the end. Turbine, we're talking about the engine. Mm -hmm. Different kinds of engines. What kind of engine does the Abrams have? So the Abrams uses a jet engine. A jet engine? Yeah, so the Abrams uses a Rolls-Royce jet engine. Ah! It's a custom engine. They use it in the Apache as well. So nice. It's, it's a nice engine. Roll, baby. Russians, man, always bigger. Oh, you see you got the different rounds along the bottom mm -hmm. that you can use? Okay. So and you then, see like, the penetration on them. Yeah. I love the little timer, the reload timer, how it's building up. Makes it realistic. Because you got somebody, you got to reload it. Right, yeah. yeah. Can you aim down sights? I mean, like, what's the looking down? Oh, you got him. Can you look down? Is there like a, a way to view, like when you hear the gunner? So you have a small sight, it's about two inches wide, called a gunner primary sight, GPS system we call it. And you have a big, big little screen down here called a biot. And it's open, it's just looking like this. Your eyes are big and you're looking like that. It's like a big screen and you're just playing with it. Oh, okay. A lot of us use that when we're being lazy, but you want your eye trained on the gunner primary sight so it's more accurate, it's okay. faster. So here he is taking out air targets. Oh, wow, he's got a machine gun with him? No, oh, good shot. It's actually pretty hard to do. Kudos to him. Oh, it looks like it all, like, like Okay, here we are. Yeah, Blackhawk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gameologists, I've had such an amazing time hanging out with 
Shelby Bragg, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your expertise. What did you think about War Thunder? War Thunder was amazing. I like the fact that War Thunder had so many realistic points yeah. that remind me of being in a tank. You were talking about the detail as far as where the round is hitting and what it's doing to affect like the crew inside and the armor plating and stuff like that. I dig that. I like to dig that level of detail. It showed you like the round hit, how it take out a crew. Some games don't do that. The tank just blows up. This one showed you why the tank blew up. So. Those are quite interesting. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Total Recoil. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and head over to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. If you want to hang out with me a little bit more, check out me and Cameron at Shift Fire on YouTube, where we explore and appreciate all things military and firearms culture. Or you can go and check out the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast. If you want to hang out with me a little bit more, head over to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. And Shelby, where can they get a hold of you online? So if you want to get a hold of me, you can find me on Instagram at mr.kelly underscore 400. Thanks for joining us, Shelby. Thanks for having me. Folks, take care. Thanks for joining us, Kelly. Sorry. Thanks for joining us, Shelby. And uh, I think, um, well, your host today, and today, also today, 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 today. <laughs>